Hey guys, welcome to part one of a two-part video series on how you can use the Wyckoff methodology in your own trading. Part one is going to give you more of an overview, so a contextual framework to view the market and also view stocks. We're going to do that by understanding the Wyckoff price cycle, which there are four parts, accumulation, uptrend, distributional top, and a downtrend. We're going to be looking at Apple here on the weekly chart, and I've also got a couple of schematics with repeatable fractal points that happen in these structures time and time again. So I'll be talking to you about that. And then in part two, that's going to come out in around about a week week's time, that's going to be much more detail orientated into the tactics of trading, specifically when am I looking to, when am I looking to enter trades, how I'm, how I'm, how I am then controlling the risk, mitigating the risk, then managing the positions as well from springs and breakouts as I trade springs and I also trade, also trade breakouts. So let's jump on into it. So the first thing to understand is the market moves in cycles and stocks move in cycles as well. So you want to be keenly aware of where is the market in terms of its cycle or the most applicable market and or sector ETF and also the stock as well. Is the stock undergoing a phase four downtrend? Is it in potentially a phase one accumulation base? Is it in a strong phase two, phase two uptrend? So you can see here, We'll start with the downtrend. So this is Apple on the weekly chart going from 1997 to around about 2015. Really good example. So phase four decline coming through here. So the downtrend then into a phase one accumulation base, phase two uptrend, phase three distributional top, phase four downtrend, phase one accumulation base, phase two uptrend, phase three distributional top, phase four downtrend, phase one accumulation base, phase two uptrend, phase three distribution top, phase four decline, and then a phase one accumulation base, then another phase two uptrend. You get the point how the stock here is moving in cycles, but being able to pinpoint where you potentially are in the cycle can then certainly help you with your with your trading. And when we go into part two, where well, we'll get really dialed into how am I then looking to target the strongest of the strong stocks and potential phase two uptrends, we'll be bringing in concepts like relative strength, understanding optimal chart patterns in phase two continuation uptrends, cup and handles, VCPs, flags, Darvis boxes, all of that Good stuff how you can utilize the moving averages as uh, as well just for reference point the moving averages that I would suggest you have on the uh, on the weekly charts is the black line here, which is the 10 week moving average. I have the electric blue line, which is the 21 EMA. I have the red line, which is the 40 week simple moving average. And then the navy blue line that you see is the 100 week. And again, they are just to help me kind of understand the trend of the stock. Where is it potentially in the context of its of its uptrend? So what I want to do is we'll start going back into this in a minute, but in a minute, but let's take a look here at the schematic drawing. So there are repeatable points that occur time and time again. Richard Wyckoff was around about 100 years ago, but the man was an absolute genius, way, 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 way ahead of his way ahead of his time. And the way he kind of discovered this was by understanding and studying the market and individual stocks. How do they how do they move? How do they how do they act? Are there repeatable points that occur in bases, both in terms of accumulation bases in the context of phase two, phase two uptrends, where you see those continuation breakout type patterns, so flags, VCPs, cup and handles, Darvis boxes, phase three distributional tops, and then also in phase four declines, and then common characteristics to signal that large operators may have seen enough liquidity and perceived value, two things they require above everything else, to indicate a potential transition from a phase four decline into a phase one accumulation base. So let's start talking about it, right? So we're starting off here from a phase phase four decline. So the first thing that you that you would like to see, and I've labeled the um labeled the Apple diagram here, and we'll come back to this in a, in a second. The first thing that you would really like to see is what's called a selling climax. So a selling climax is often kind of a crescendo of, of price where it could be a significant drop in a very short period of time. You're seeing widespread candlesticks and volume is significantly elevated as, as well. That's potentially signaling that large operators are seeing enough liquidity and perceived value to be stepping in here. So you see this here? I, I know I know we don't have volume on here, but the volume is very high at this point. I've taken off the volume just so we can focus on price and I can fit more more things on the screen. I hope you appreciate there's a lot going on on this to try and fit it all in on one on one screen. So a selling climax will often be it looks very, very volatile price action to the downside. What you would then like to see after that is what's called an AR, an automatic rally. This is signaling a change of character. Now, something to be looking for is you would like to see that rally. And this is applicable whether you're using the weekly chart, the monthly chart, which is kind of rarer, but the weekly chart, the daily chart or the intraday charts as well such as the one hour chart you would like to see a change of character so the biggest rally counter trend rally thus far and especially if you have that climactic action around that can then signal the start of a trading range now it may just be a, re <coughs> a redistribution structure but it could also mean the start of an accumulation base then we'll be looking for other points so looking for that selling climax behavior and then the change of character into the automatic rally is good invariably there is then some form of testing action now the test may be to the lower the selling climax just underneath it may hold just above as you can see here 
that Apple does and then that there marks the end of phase A. Now I'm not going to go into phases because I will then make this very very kind of complicated and long um, but there are then specific points that I want to be teaching you about in part two where you can start understanding a little bit more about the phases will bring bring that into it. But the secondary test invariably will hold around the support level just under on it or just above as you can see with Apple. Invariably what happens then is a rally heading towards the top of the base which could be viewed as a bit of an up for us in a distribution structure. You would call that you would call that an up for us. So it's a quasi, it's a quasi, uh, it's a quasi up for us action. A UTA you could label that. And then as you come back down here. This is where we're looking for a spring type action. So this is also, and I'll teach you this in part two, where I'm looking for what I call a pivot, pivot spring. So where price undercuts the potential selling climax and all the secondary test low, and then has a quick recovery followed by a higher low test. So it's hard to see, I know, <coughs> but you see the weekly reversal bar coming through on Apple here, followed by the higher low test. That is very good behavior to see. So you're looking for, as you, as you go into a spring, I found that the better ones are actually the left-hand side of a V. So ideally you get a really nice steep, sharp decline into it and then you can come out the other side quicker because there's less resistance clusters there's less pockets of resistance so you actually see with apple here this is called a resistance cluster see how price traded in a um in a range here, it's basically a Darvis box. See how price traded in a range there? That's then going to mean that there's trap buyers in the overhead resistance, so it can be harder for price to move through. So you actually want this kind of really quick, sharp, aggressive move down, and then into a and then into a spring. Something to be training your eyes for as well is following the spring. You would like to see a return to the top of the base. Now, ideally, the return to the top of the base. This is something that you'll train your train your pattern recognition skills again. A lot of lot of reps and sets in here, but ideally, you want to see the strongest rally thus far within the base, or a very strong rally. So you're looking for price to move swiftly back, back to the top of the structure and the pullback should be fairly, fairly kind of muted as well. So if I just point to a couple of examples, see how Apple here, it returns to the top of the structure in fairly short order. The pullbacks are pretty muted. You can see here, there was actually another spring here. See how kind of aggressive this rally is to the to the upside. That's really good behavior to see. Why? Because it's signaling that there's a there's a changing there of, of the guard, if you like, that demand is now starting to regain control over supply. So price can move more quickly to the, to the upside. So that's just a subtlety to be looking for on that transition from a phase C spring and then into a sign of shrimp. So sign of shrimp, will come back to the top of the trading range it actually may poke its head back up back up above the uh the top of the trading range here i've kind of just indicated it kind of it kind of stalls there but i i do not i do not like to buy there i like to see where price volatility gets really really low preferably higher lows come in its prices consolidating on the key moving averages the volume dries up in this region in here now this is obviously then the minavini vcp concept where price volatility is contracting so that would then also be called the backing up action so you're looking for a spring in the context of a phase one base we'll come on to stage two uptrends in a uh, in a minute where price is then in the context of an uptrend and you see a continuation pattern but a spring into a sinus strength then you want to see a backing up type action so commonly that there will then resemble this kind of sinus strength into the backing up action will in terms of chart patterns will resemble a darvis box a vcp potentially a cup and handle type pattern because what do you see here if i now draw this like this and let's make this say orange what chart pattern do you now see cup and handle with the spring being the low of the of the cups so again these patterns will morph morph into patterns such as the fractal nature of the market so i'm then looking for price to get nice and tight and then looking to target setups in here so i'm either looking to buy here i'm either looking to buy in here or i'm looking to buy the spring in here these are the three points on the chart where i where i'm uh, where i'm looking where i'm looking for and they are very kind of clearly defined i have a lot of rules around that i'll take you through those in part two of this video but those arrows there indicate where i'm then looking to uh, to buy then obviously as you power into a to a phase two uptrend you are looking for volume to be coming through on the breakout ideally you're looking for very bullish price action so if you see how apple starts really just powering up here multiple up weeks in a row widespread candlesticks i call that bullish synchronicity we'll go in more so into candlesticks in part two of this video just kind of keeping it as an overview and then when you're in the context of the uptrend here you're on the lookout for phase two continuation type pattern so the stock is now in a nice uptrend and then you're looking for vcp cup and handle flags darvis boxes it's much more rare when the stock is in the context of a phase two uptrend that you will get those kind of the classic the classic spring it's not to say it doesn't happen you can see a couple of times where there are there are some spring type characteristics coming through in here let me go back to the blue it's a little bit easier for you guys to see um 
not so much in there there's a kind of a little bit of a little bit of a spring more so the mega caps you can get kind of the springs but some of the quicker movers some of the more kind of growth orientated names that have high earnings high sales coming through it's less common to see kind of those springs you can see them in the context of face uptrend but with those it's more common to actually see something like you see with apple here where it just starts building higher lows cup and handles vcps flags Davis boxes stuff like that so if the stock is in the context of a phase two uptrend i would say it's less common to see kind of that classic fade that facey spring will come onto that in part two that classic facey spring more often you're going to see a stock building higher lows like this flags vcps Davis boxes um cup and handles as as well so then i'm looking to time breakouts now that could be from a higher base breakout it could be from kind of a mid pivot a, a low pivot as well really depends on the setup we'll go into a lot of that in in phase two then as you end or come in or come into the end of, of the price cycle so now you're going from the phase two uptrend into the phase redistributional top invariably you can also do you can do a base count as well so you see we have this big phase one accumulation base down here we then have one continuation um one, one continuation base there we have the second continuation base here we maybe have three or four depending on depending on how you count that but we've certainly got three there and then we've actually got a little fourth one coming through in there then into the phase three top so invariably you will have somewhere between three and five continuation bases before the phase three distributional top so as you start getting later stage these bases can be more prone to failure one of the things to be on the lookout for is an increased volatility into the distributional structure so you see how volatility here is increasing see how volatility here is increasing now how are you measuring that you're using your eyeballs you're looking at the chart looking at things on a relative basis see how volatility of the price action increases it increases it it increases in here there's actually then this up thrust after distribution in here and see how price was wedging up we'll come on to some of those things um, a little bit a little bit later on in, in part two of the video but something to be on the lookout for if you have seen a phase one accumulation base and then you've been able to base count and you go well the stock's had um it's had one con one continuation base two three four this is potentially the fifth so you see here it's one two three four this is then getting into fifth stage that's getting fairly fairly late in the day remember the large operators who are accumulating their positions down here they're now looking they're now looking to uh to sell into retail traders so you may see around phase three distribution top suddenly the stock is making it's in mainstream media there's articles being written about it the stock's up whatever it may be several several hundred percent several thousand percent and you start seeing it being spoken about in in a lot of places that there can actually be a little bit of a warning sign you're fairly near a phase three um distributional di distributional top so increased volatility into a buying climax you then have an ar which is an automatic reaction coming through and again see see how the volatility in here is really increased so as much as you're looking for a change of character for a positive side from a phase four <coughs> into a phase one you're looking for that change character selling climax into an automatic rally you're also on the lockout for increased volatility in terms of buying climax and then into an automatic reaction see that how it's kind of increased volatility again something experience deliberate practice just training your pattern recognition skills see that sometimes they're more obvious to see than uh, than not and then oftentimes in a distributional base you'll have it the price action will just look more sloppy it's more volatile the base isn't isn't nice and tight as you see in say in say a phase two continuation pattern it's more volatile see how much more volatile this is it doesn't really tighten up in here as well it's just kind of wedging up in there this is a really good example see how volatile this price action is in there it's not kind of quiet orderly see how much less volatile this continuation type pattern is in this phase two uptrend so that is what that is what you're looking for these phase two continuation patterns you're looking for kind of a lot of <coughs> a, a large reduction in price volatility it's just boring the candlesticks are, are pretty tight volume is drying up ideally you've got the relative strength line turning up we'll cover that in part two and then the final kind of top with a with a distribution is a utad that's an up thrust after distribution which can then often lead to a sign of weakness and then an lpsy as well which is invariably when you look at it on the chart a fairly feeble rally attempt so this here this would be an up thrust after distribution Okay, this would then be a sign of weakness and then a fairly feeble rally attempt that then rolls back over like that and then another another sign of weakness and then into the phase into the phase four decline and then there's the change of character coming through. But that there is kind of the contextual framework to be thinking about the stock that you are you're you're looking at, to be potentially looking at the indexes as well. Are they in the context of a phase one base? Are they in the context of a nice powerful phase two uptrend? Are they undergoing a phase three distributional top, which are harder to spot in real time, but increased volatility is something something to be on the lookout for is it in the context of a, of a phase of a phase four decline so just knowing where are the indexes or the applicable indexes sector etfs where are the where is the stock that you're looking at where is kind of the overall overall group you're looking at as well is it fairly early on 
in a phase one accumulation base is it is it getting a little bit long in the tooth have you seen in terms of the, in terms of the sector etf is it potentially building a fourth stage or a fifth stage um, base in the context of a, of a phase two uptrend these are things to then be uh, to be dialed in and and looking for so ideally if you're more so an investor, you're looking, you're looking to, uh, you're looking to purchase stocks. I would, I would for when when I'm kind of investing and trying to campaign stocks, I'm looking around phase, phasey springs, and I'm also looking at stocks that are coming out of potentially large phase one bases to try and campaign positions. If you're much more of a kind of a kind of kind of a trader and much more kind of active, you're probably looking for stocks that are more so in a clearly defined phase two, phase two uptrend, and then you're targeting Darvis boxes, VCPs, cup and handles, flags, so on and so forth. So I'll wrap that video up there, guys, for part one in part two which will come out in around about a week we'll get we'll get down into it in terms of the details for how i am looking to buy springs how i'm looking to buy um looking to buy some some phase two continuation type patterns as well i'll show you kind of uh several several different ones as well i'll show you kind of higher base breakouts mid mid pivots low pivots i'll show you a couple of variations on the springs type of candlestick that you want to be on the lookout for as well going into the volume going into the relative strength reference points of the moving averages all of that good stuff so part two will be very much in depth so thank you very much for for watching and i'll see you in part two